Okay. Today we will look into the Spring Boot. Uh, how can we do start our journey with the Spring Reactive side of things? Because as you know, the modern Spring Five and Spring Six right, have a, like a two kind of implementation that we can do. We can use the standard uh, Spring MVC kind of implementation, which is basically synchronous. APIs where you can you know wait until the request has been completed. You run it on an embedded server like Tomcat, JT, etc. And uh, obviously there are like Spring Webflux, which provide kind of like a reactive or asynchronous APIs. And where you have uh, like asynchronous I/O, asynchronous database, etc. Right. Okay. So normally, when people are look for a Spring Web application, the simplest form of application is that you have like a front end JavaScript, React, or uh, Android, your Angular kind of a web application, right? Where the JavaScript way you can you know send calls to the backend server, right? And you can handle that response in a separate event. And your backend APIs are basically asynchronous server running on something like an AD on non-blocking IO, anybody who accessing databases and other microservices. What you can do instead of, you know, jumping into the whole application or rewrite the application, using Spring Web Flux, right? You can do this, right? In an existing application, you can do piecemeal migration to maybe, you know, changing, keeping the front end of the application uh, or the controller layer still in MVC and your back end, you can change it to Spring Reactive using a different layer, right? Your services, repository, clients, etc. And this way of moving to the Spring Webflux is create less risks and you have like immediate benefit or boost that is there. So in that case, you know, your request handling, directive request handling is going to be happening in the controller layer. And the rest of the backend is basically non broad so we know that uh, when we call to microservice to microservices, we use basically REST template. The REST template is basically very old, right? And it is being now marked for deprecation in the updated Spring version. It has like a template methods where they have like a different way, like you have like get method, query code, object, execute method, which is the most versatile one. And then you have like synchronous API, right? There is no support for streaming responses also. But then it was created like 1.5. Now there are 10 years been passed. Now we have new language features like Java 8, computable future is obviously there. You can handle asynchronous modes, right? And you also have like a, no longer our networks are basically synchronous. So that, what we have, we can replace that part, at least as a web client. Web client is basically functional APIs, right? It's asynchronous, non-blocking, so reactive, declarative. It also handles streaming. It have a, like a fluent API where you can set up the body and then kind of your request your error handler, et cetera, right? That you can use. And uh, let us see that in a controller layer, you can also change using the, uh, instead of what we current day is return is the response object. Now, instead of a response object, we can, if we are like, returning a single response, a single object, we can return mono. If you're returning multiple objects, Right, we can return flux, and if they need to be observable, that the client need to observe 
and when the response is sent from the server side, so observable can be detailed, right? And they are basically detached from your container thread or your you know web container thread that is either your native threads are separate out, right? And built on server 3.0 asynchronous support. So how we're going to be compare this. So previously we have like different result also in MBC, right? So if we wanted to send a single response, we can also use different result with the result may appear later on. There we can use the data times, we can change it to reactive site as well. No? If we are using logs for the list of items, then we can save logs. If it's streaming when the response is there, response body emitter, we can use so that's you know continuously sending the messages back. Okay, so how can we use can we use the web client as Spring MDC controller? Yes, we can because web client clients are like separate. They are not dealing with your request threads or anything. Yeah. Declarative remote API calls, right? You can take URI, you can take body, you can take headers like that. And then you can, you know, map to a particular mono or flux, right? So your client layer can be scaled out, okay? And reactive handling is not just web client, it's also other areas also. So let us see some example. Uh, other options of reactive handling is that when you're using the Spring data repository, right? The database activity. Nowadays, what we have, we have React, uh, you know, reactive driver for MongoDB, reactive driver for Postgres, Cloud base, etc. that you can use. You can use a uh, WebSocket client with uh, WebFlux. Also, you can use asynchronous messages, RabbitMQ, HTTP client. Or Cloud Foundry, Java clients are also there. So let us look some sample example. Right. So normally, uh, what it basically does. Okay. So basically, what you do is this is my sample application, right? Okay. In the sample application, what we have is that we have the client layer. Right. Okay. And there is like a remote service. Okay. So remote service application is there. It is just a Spring Boot application. It has a router function. Just give me one second. Okay. So here we can see that uh, what is in that. Yeah. So this is like a Spring Boot application, right? Now here what we have is simple a WebFlux, right? 
with flux application. With the single file, we have everything in memory, nothing outside. OK, so let's see what we have here. So first of all, here the mapping is done using routes or routing function, right? Now you have like a personal handler that basically going to handle the request. You can think this is as your controller, right? An individual methods of same particular handler is mapped to the particular endpoint, right? So this bean is created. This is like a route. So you have like a get person. So they're giving you all the person that is there, a specific person, the specific person hobbies and person event. And also you have like some delay filter, which will simulate kind of you know processing time because we are returning everything from a in memory, right? Data structure. And let us look into the delay filter. So delay filter is just doing nothing. So in the mono, what we have is that it is just a filter, right? Just like a normal filter we have. Now here, instead of HTTP server request response, we have a, like, have to extract from the handle filter function, which is a server response or server request, right? One server response to it is changing to another server responses, okay? So now here you have the server request and server response, which is the next in the filter chain. So what is doing here is, uh, so request parameter, you can send a delay, how long you want it to wait. So based on the request parameter, whatever you get, you convert that particular delay in duration of a second to pass you a particular value, okay? Or else you return a duration of zero. So you just map it to a duration object, right? If there is delay is zero, right? So you just move to the next request object without any, uh, uh, delay that is there rather than you are returning mono this year always we are returning a single object right so when you're returning mono what i can add we can add the delay so that is explicitly make your application to be waiting on this Okay, and then you have flat map. That means here you are handling, moving to the next filter, next handler. So it will go to the person handler and the whatever result is there, that will be written. Okay. So you have understood how the wave flux we can create routes, right? So here not explicitly we are mapping using annotation rather than we are creating function. Right, a group of URL map to the methods that are there. So now let's look into the person responses, right? So one response is that there is no data form, not form. So if whenever we don't find any data, we got to return this. Okay, so it is just a server response, not form built. Okay. Next one is the persons that you wanted to get. Okay, so what is doing? It's doing nothing much. It has a, like a person data, it's an object that been created, in memory object, which is just storing the different names, nothing more. Okay. And from there, you just setting this as a server response, okay. Sync body, whatever, you know, value you want to return, that you are returning out of this. Okay. Now here you are getting person, and server request. So server request, you need to explicitly get those values. So you are getting the request of path variable ID on the path ID. From the map, you wanted to get the person ID. If the body is not null, then you are returning that. Otherwise, you are returning not null. That is not found. Not found. We are building that as once. Nothing is found. Okay. Now, person hobbies, you get the hobby idea. Hobby data is again another map that has a PN value, right? 
So whatever you know the particular process how we is that the same way you are returning. Here we are only seeing mono because here we are returning mono objects that are there. A single object we are returning as a server response. Right. But here we are internally in the body of the server responses, we are returning a map. Okay. Now here you have like get person in memory. Okay. So what you are doing now here we are returning server send events, right? With some intervals. So this is like a internal function event. Okay. So where it's taking so server send events are basically multiple events that are going to go around to the front end application. So here you are using flux interval. After every two seconds, duration of two seconds, it's going to be map the value, okay, with the index i divided by 10 plus 1. So whatever value comes, that will be returning. And then server sent events you are sending, build a data advert. So that's how can you send the server sent event, and then you have a simple in memory static data that you are returning, how we data, person data, etc. And also, there is like a at person method is there, which is just taking the values and putting into the ad hobby methods, are also there, which is internally used, those are not uh, exposed. So, this is like a remote. Asynchronous service, right? So if I wanted to access this, I can use the web client, right? And here now you don't have much, the port number and the debugging. So here in the form.xml, what we have is Steam boot. And what you are taking from the Spring Boot, you are just taking only wave flux, nothing more out here. So when you get that, here you have now the clients. Now look into the main application out here. It is also a Spring Boot application. It initializes some data from the account repository. So account repository out here normal reactive mongo repository so it is not a normal repository it's mongo repository and also it's a reactive one okay so if you have uh, you can put those details of mongodb server out here okay and whatever you know value their account and long it will return from it then you have like a main controller so here we are mixing our mvc with the Backend, right? So you have a MVC controller, but some part of a web flux you are importing out here. So out here you are building the client, web client builder, builder you are taking the base URL and you are building it and the account repository that you have. Now hobby is hobby. You have like a JSON. Uh, just these are just basic more objects which are just nothing much. It has returning the hobby of the user, it has the account object, and you have the person object. Okay, all three objects are there. So now our main application, what we are doing is we are initializing the data using command line runner whether using account repository. If you have like a MongoDB that is running locally you will create, you get first create a list of uh, account object, right? By putting from an iterator. From the repository, you are deleting everything. Then you are, many objects you are saving and the block class. So it will wait till the last object is finished. So by this, you are actually creating or populating the MongoDB server with the initial value. Okay, now out of here you have this uh, rest controller, right? 
Now, this is like a MVC rest controller, right? If you can see, by default, it is using the wave bind annotations for wave, spring framework wave. But your client is coming from the web reactive part of it, web client. So it's basically going to call this and get the particular detail. Now your client side, we are going to go all the three steps, how we can you know manually you know modify this one by one. And here you have a web client. So what do you have the web client? You have a get person, right? So from the web client URL with the delay tool, that means since you're going to the remote server and you're modifying the body, whatever server response you get, now you body to flux, multiple objects. So you are returning persons. Okay. So even if your uh, MBC can make uh, annotations, but you still can use flux as well. And when you want at a single person, then your body to mono, it just moves to single user. And when you have the person stream, then you say it's a stream value. Take slash event stream, right? So it is every two seconds, it will execute and return an event. So you're making a call, you are accepting text event stream. Okay. And then they retrieve the particular response and then returning that to a flux object. So you're returning a flux of multiple objects. And person hobbies is basically the map that you are returning. So here you have a, like an account repository, you're finding the all. So when you are using this particular reactive functions, right? Normally, what do you do? Normally in a repository, we make a call. Right, find all, and that's it. But here, after we say we sort by score sort, right? Descending the score by score wise is descendingly sorting this. Then whatever values it got, it only going to take the five initial value. Then it going to be flat map that in sequence every client object that is come is getting the client person id then it's making a call to the web client and then it's getting the person name so you're getting the mono name after you retrieve that you get the person hobby that you map and that you got it so two things are there but these two are going to be handled or work or executed will be executed in a separate threads, right? So what I need to do, I need to zip this two mono object together and return the response, right? So here we are using mono zip. So from the two mono objects, whatever you know value that is written, that particular we are getting one person name, another is a person hobby. So we are making two API calls. So after we get the API calls, we create a map and then we are returning. Okay, so that way we can get the top account hobbies that are there. So here what you are actually seeing is we are seeing that how can we you know make that reactive or asynchronous repository? How can you use client, etc.? Okay. That way we can see. Now we can come to these steps, step by step also. Okay. So here we are to, uh, also can do these things with the uh, REST templates. Then we're going to compare with the client. We are not looking to the client code. So in the main, what we are doing, we have uh, like a base uh, URL. And the template, we are setting the base template has them. Pure video factory that based on that it will create a template handler. So here we are getting the data for three users, persons one, two, three. Okay. Then using that, we are seeing the how long it going to take to get the responses. Okay. So if we run this, we're going to see this is going to take certain milliseconds, depending on the duration that we set. 
So each of this request will be happening on in sequence and with a delay of two minutes each. So that means it will take a maximum of six seconds. So this is very slow, right? So sequentially, if you go by this, and also synchronous way, it will take a more time. Now, let's see if we wanted to modify this using a web client, how the web client will work. Okay, the web client will work, but web client will be asynchronous, right? So it will be, you know, much more separate threads will be happening and these are not container threads or your main request that this is separate threads that will execute and that will you know create a thing so then you say that these are been running in parallel and you get the response in two seconds so that is the difference between these two code third we are seeing the same example right now here we wanted to see that how can we write this right? So here we created a list of mono object, right? And if we say that we have like uh, non synchronous thing, right? So mono plus whatever we get, we have to call the block method. So block method will be waiting unless there is a response coming back to us. Okay, but still your requests are going in a multiple parallel thread. So what you are doing, you just on previously what you are doing with the web client, we are making the call, retrieve, and then we are converting body to mono. Here we are also retrieving, we are changing to body to mono. And then we are do or next, we just printing out, okay, we got this person, we got that person. Now we are, when this is a body to mono, what is returning us? is returning us as a mono person. So we're getting a list of mono persons. So that will be dissolved in future, right? So here we are going to be when this list, I'm going to wait on this list when all the requests are, you know, process. It is not in sequence order, but in parallel order, but whenever we got the last value list, so it will wait up to that and then you get a log time that is there. Next, you have a web client, okay? Now here we are doing the same thing with, not with a loop, but with a flux, with a range function. So it starts with one to three. So you are saying that on two next, what are you going to do? Are you going to be? Painting out that okay, I want to get in one object. Next, we are doing the flat map. I from the I we are retrieving the mono object and we are returning to the body. So what we get after that, we get a flux of persons. On do next, we can say we got a person and then the block last. So whatever the last object when that is been resolved, we're going to be waiting for that. So that's another way of if you can write the same code. Now here we have another uh, reference, right? Now here we got the object. Then after that, we also do a flat map. And from the flat map itself, what we are returning, we are actually returning HTTP status. We are getting what is from the response, right? Here we are getting the exchange. We are calling the exchange method. So when you call the exchange method, and what is previously this is different from others is that here we're calling the retrieve method. And what is the retrieve method return me? It return me a response specification. From the response specification, you're calling body to mono, body to flux, etc. Here you are doing the exchange, exchange giving you a client response. When you get a client response from the response, you are getting the HTTP status. Here you can get HTTP headers, you can print those out or do modification, you know, do whatever you want to. And from the response, again, you can call body to mono. Then you are seeing the block class and you are getting the responses out. So there is a two methods we can see to 
actually making the call. One is retrieve, one is client response. So client response give you additional method for getting the status and the header. Now, what if I need to do uh, when one API request has been completed? I need to make another API request call. So basically, I'm going to having a person. When the person is resolved, then I'm going to find his hobbies. Okay, and then I'm going to mix that and to return that whatever. So first, what is we are getting that we are getting here the person's time, and from there we are getting the particular person detail. And then from the person detail, maybe from the person at gate ID you are calling. And then from there, you can get in the hobbies. So that you can also retrieve. The last step, another way is simple. You are just using client UI retrieve. You are modifying that to your flux. Then you are you know, painting some value. You can also take the only the four values here is the event and the block on the last so that's how we can use reactive with mvc if you need to that what you're going to do we're going to keep our controller as a rest controller we're going to have them map to gate mapping post mapping etc but they're going to be returning either flux or mono objects okay and then inside that we can use the clients which is your client is basically use any of this way of retrieving the data from the remote API. And then it also can serve a data which, which is also reactive one. Okay. So, so far, any question on this? No, sir. Let's look into some of the best practices for doing this. Uh, when you were writing in a blocking API, it means any REST API which is not synchronous or not synchronous, don't mix them, okay? Either to use the web client only for non-blocking APIs, okay? And uh, what you can do, don't put non blocking code behind synchronous APIs, right? That is not going to give you some risk, uh, you know, performance gain because anyhow, your main container thread will be waiting. So instead of, you know, having like, uh, having like uh, your MVC controller having method, right? Where you returning the responses? You returning their flux and mono. So in to end, you have to write flux and mono that code, right? And next, do not use blog or subscribe. So what happened when you use blog or subscribe? It's become synchronous, right? It's going to then wait for that particular thing to be written, right? Let your Spring MVC handle the asynchronous uh, API call, right? And you can, you know, vertically break them in a non-blocking sizing, right? Like your services can be your non-blocking mono and flux. Your uh, reactive database can be also separate. And also your clients also can be separated out, you know, vertically you can break it down. Okay. Now, what about testing? So we have used the web test, uh, web client, right? But how can we test that? It is not synchronous anymore, right? You can, can I write integration test for any backend? Can I handle the streaming scenario? Let's see the example for this. Sir, so what would we use instead of subscribe or block? Yeah, why we're not using subscriber block? So instead of subscriber and block, what we need to return, we need to return mono and fox. 
right here you got to return this return to mono so your response type will be mono person like here in the controller what we have done we have retrieved the response pick and then we say body to flux or body to mono that will be our return type from our services also and the same thing can we find from returning from our repository also correct so when at the moment you put block then means it will be behave like your synchronous code where you just waiting it to be completed right instead of let the framework handle it the framework going to know when the particular response is done then it's going to be returning back fine always return the this return type is a mono or flux that you can use or what you can do in case of a server streaming also it's we can use flux Oh. let's see the testing part of it so how can i write test so main application test right so it is the run with uh, spring runner fine um and it's spring boot test and you run your application on a web environment on a, any kind of random port whichever free port that is there you auto add the web client fine so here what you are writing right you are writing a particular way where you are exchanging that your status you are checking okay so here you are taking web test client okay and this is the person id right so person id is what which is defined into your controller this one right so this one your application is started it's going to call web test client get URI exchange it get web test client response pick not normal response pick then you have different assertion methods so what are the assertion method expect status is okay is not found etc you can check expected header content type media that is JSON application expected body that is person class is equal to a certain person that you can also check the next one we have seen so here we are actually asserting the body with a java object now if you wanted to assert the individual json nodes right you can do that also so what we are having like okay after you expecting the body right you don't put any kind of class type or anything, right? Now you can use the JSON path. So JSON path, what should be the number of node it is written? So it will be returning 10 nodes. It is under root, so it is 10 nodes. So this is like a root of your application, dollar zero, dollar zero one dot name. What will be? It is Amanda Whitney, etc. 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 You can evaluate. You can use indexes and you can evaluate that. If you have like a nested object, then you can use dot and then you can access it. So say you have a person as a hobby, right? So dollar three is a person, dot hobby, dot name is something like that. That way you can also write. So this is like a JSON pathways. You just do the validation. A person event or streaming data, how we can you know handle that? So there you can use. Now, when you're getting the response body, you are only taking the first string. The content type will be different. It is like a text.stream. Return result type is a person. Response body, you get a person, you get only first three. Now, step verifier you can use. The step verifier you created on the body. Then each step, you're looking into expect next, what is the next person, then next person, next person, then very, very complete. So if any step with this fail, so it will be shown. So you can do the streaming side of things. Now we wanted to get the hobby, like I mentioned. So right, 
So now here is a root. You have two paths. One is a person path. Each of element you have a hobby path. So that you are equating to it. Okay, that's actually returning a map. So on the map you are taking what is the length is five because it's top five and then you say person, their hobby, person and every etc. Okay. So that's the basic example how we can use uh, Spring Web Flux as a standalone or Spring Web Flux with the Spring MVC. Any question on this? If not, let us see some other example. So we have understood best practices. We have understood uh, how can we write the uh, great discourse fine. Now let's see another example. Here we have the. Yeah, so we can look into now the next, uh, how can we do these things in terms of our, you know, databases. Okay, so in that case of a database, what we have is here we have one application, uh, which is basically nothing but uh, it is, it can be a simple your Spring application, etc. 
leave it. We don't need to read all of that. Request handling, etc. The services, etc., is there. And converter, etc., has been written. Fine. We don't need all of that. Let us look into the Mongo configuration, Mongo controller, and Mongo repository. Right? How? What are things we need to do for the MongoDB part of it? Hmm. Okay. 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 Um, so here we have. Hmm. Okay, fine. So here we're going to be, you know, configuring the Mongo connection. So how are we going to be Mongo connection? So it is Mongo. Okay, so here we have the Mongo client, we create and we get the database, right? Okay. And here what you need to do specifically is that we need to create a different kind of a driver that is reactive driver, right? Similarly, for post case, we have to see, get the async driver. If you are using couch base, we have to use the, their client, right? So normal drivers we need to replace with the reactive one, correct? That we need to put. And here, by default, what you are doing in the configuration, we just put the Mongo clients and we put in the database name. By default, it will take the local ports and local port by default. Those defaults, if you don't update, that will be going to be used. So that done. Now in the controller side, we have this controller, right? And here we are using publisher, right? Now in the publisher, the repositories are returning the value. Here is we have still have the MVC kind of a thing. Now if we look into the our Mongo repository. And in the Mongo repository, we are we can use the publishers also to get the values and this. But rather than what you can do, we can use the reactive uh, server that we have seen, right? Reactive repository base class we have to use, just like out here. And the rest will be automatically, you know, come into a stream, flux, or mono, or the flux stream. That way we can use. And here we can, you know, directly from the controller itself. We don't need to write the controller. We just define the routers. Or if, if you want to use the MVC, then we just return the mono and cons. That's all we have to do for database side of things. So any questions so far? If not, let us just do a recap. So what do you have seen? We have seen how can we do the reactive programming using Webflux. So first of all, we need to just use the Webflux dependency into our Maven or Gradle file. Next, what we have to do is uh, we have to add our, if we need to call any third party web services or API, microservices, we should be using Spring Web Client, which gives the simple basic URI. Then you can also add the credentials there. You can add headers. You can add the content type, etc. You can set it. But that is like a fluent API. Like you put one method, then you set another method, etc., etc. And then you call either Retrieve or Exchange 
and then you map the body to either mono or flux as the case may be we should not be using block or subscript because it will block the particular thread and it will return a mono or flux person object or whatever you know your pojo that is really written that is your level now similarly on the reactive side of things what you need to write on the reactive side you have to first uh, database side you have to either using mongo or using post case etc you have to use the reactive driver for mongodb or async client etc okay next in the same like the service side we should be calling either this client or other services we should be detaining a monar flux on the controller layer there is no controller layer per se we basically have the reactive handler so what is the reactive handler it's a simple java class it doesn't require any annotations it has different methods right and the method we just authorize uh, you know inject values and then there are like independent methods which we map to a gate post post etc right and the particular outer configuration will be written and there from there what you're going to be returning you're going to be returning again the mono and flux okay what is the benefit of using reactive programming obviously end to end it give us a uh, high performance in terms of how the threads will be utilized right things will be done in parallel okay similarly you can also add exception handling blocks too okay and then you can handle the exceptions you can return a response okay or you can throw an exception and from there you can you know return the response using global advice or something so that's one this next how can we test so for test we can uh, use the spin uh, for your web client we can use web test client now web test client is going to be using a url and it's going to be running your application and there it goes and then it's going to be making a call and from that particular call it's going to be getting the retrieving the value then it's going to be expect the status expect the header expect body and the body can be mapped different way body can be mapped with a direct object with a certain type or from the body we can map using json right and from the json we can map independent path sub path indexes and we can independently map those values with the json field next what else we can do out there we can also have like a streaming object right so streaming data will coming from the server the so same way you can you know retrieve the value and you can you know evaluate that with a step verifier which is one after another will be evaluating that from the web test client client response pick okay that's like a brief introduction how can we start getting started uh, move from spring mvc to spring web flux okay so you're almost down to the last two minutes if any other question is there or else we can close the session okay fine let me stop the session. Thank you guys for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you.